Uh, so in this video, uh, I would like to talk about a topic that has been also asked uh, a lot of times from my students and also uh, a lot of those who study English have one thing in mind and that is to study abroad uh, or to do an internship abroad uh, or to ultimately work abroad um, in an English-speaking country. So I wanted to begin uh, this topic by sharing my uh, experience as an exchange student. So I uh, applied for a scholarship program to study in the US um, on my third year. So I finished my fourth year of studies um, in Cleveland and I also did an internship uh, there. Um, my internship was in an art museum. Um, later on I uh, also worked for their film festival and uh, for their Institute of Art. Uh, I also did an internship there, so I have a little bit of a diverse experience when it comes to um, living, studying and working in a foreign country. Um, the first question that students ask is, is my English good enough uh, for this kind of um, experience? So am I going to be able to understand professors to communicate with um, a lot of students from different countries and ultimately to pass a job interview or an internship interview and to successfully uh, continue my career there. So basically there are two types of people who uh, study English uh, for this foreign adventure. The first are those who are uh, studying in their home country and they would like to continue their studies abroad. Uh, or those who are graduate students who would like to apply for a work experience abroad. And there, there is this other group of uh, my students uh, that are, you know, professionals um, who can be a little bit older, but they, uh, in the middle of their professional career, they want to apply for an MBA program or they want to apply for a, a graduate school, a PhD, to just kind of advance their um, their knowledge and then later come back to their home country. So in my personal experience, um, this interview that you're going to have in the embassy or uh, at the scholarship or fund uh, where you are applying for, this is basically uh, the, the level check that, um, that you will have to pass uh, if you want to study abroad. So they will ask you questions uh, about yourself, about your purpose, about um, adjusting to the foreign culture and through your answers they are going to very successfully um, make a conclusion about uh, your readiness, so to speak. Uh, so um, later on, if you pass to the next stage, you will have to prepare for different tests, usually IELTS or TOEFL. And um, if you successfully pass those tests, then later on uh, you're going to have like an orientation week where you're going to be presented with uh, the program of your studies. So from my experience, I went to my interview completely uh, spontaneous, so I did not prepare my English, I did not prepare myself for this interview specifically. Um, but through the years, uh, of course, I was studying English in school and in college. I was um, reading a lot of English books, a lot of academic texts for my university program, and also uh, I watched a lot of TV shows and movies. I was on the internet, so the English was part of my life uh, basically every day, which also is an important thing. So this is what I tell my students always. So don't just study, uh, you know, um, one day a week or two days a week. You have to engage in English uh, a little bit every day. Just checking the news or listening a podcast um, or, you know, any, any preference that you have in English, uh, but make it every day. Just let's say that you passed uh, this interview and now that you are in your foreign country of desire and you are beginning your studies. Uh, a lot of Asian students, specifically Japanese students that I teach, are very shy uh, when it comes to multicultural communication. So now, uh, suddenly, everything is going to come to you. So you're going to have to read books in a foreign language, you're going to have to meet people um, who don't speak the same language as your um, home country's language. So you're going to have to um, adjust to this um, 
multicultural environment, so to speak, and also work under pressure because um, the studies that you are going to take also demand certain deadlines and you're going to be, uh, you know. But I always say fear not because I had a lot of uh, friends who also uh, finished successfully their exchange programs or their graduate studies abroad and um, they were different levels of English so um, as as long as you um, are engaged in the profession that you want to pursue uh, and uh, you practice a little bit this social skills and making a small talk you'll be good uh, so don't be afraid that your English is not going to be good enough if you pass all these steps um, after the interview and do the final test um, so most likely you're going to be successful in your exchange program. One of my tips when you are living in a foreign country and studying in a foreign country is to engage with the local culture. So this will help you improve your English, you know, talking about the weather with like a local baker or ordering a coffee and asking for additional information uh, or, you know, walking into a local store and um, again making a small talk with the with the owner or with the seller. Um, so all of these things are going to maybe now sound a little bit um, strange and maybe scary, but uh, when you when you go there and when you see yourself in that situation, it is uh, it is our natural instinct to communicate with others. So you will be pushed to think about. Um, what am I going to say in English? And so, little by little, this experience is going to improve your English rapidly uh, through, through months. When your exchange studies finally begin, uh, don't be afraid that uh, professors are going to judge you in any way because your English is not perfect or because you're a foreign student. Uh, so, um, I live in a country which is called Serbia and in the higher education system here, professors are a little bit more distant um, f from students and you cannot call them at any time and ask them questions. So uh, the situation is a little bit different than uh, let's say in America where I used to do my exchange studies. There professors are very engaged with students, they listen carefully, they listen, um, they ask you if you have some questions or they invite you to visit their office and to discuss more your topics and they're very very friendly. Um, also when you enter this classroom you're gonna see that there are a lot of uh, students from different countries and that is gonna be encouraging for you to uh, you know speak up because you will feel equal uh, in this environment. If you like your exchange studies and you want to move forward uh, applying for an internship or a job position uh, within a company or an institution may be your next step. So try to find something in the area where you uh, study. Uh, in my case it was Cleveland. And uh, if you send them uh, an email about your intent, they're usually going to answer and call you for a, an interview. Uh, in that interview you sh are supposed to talk about yourself um, and your, um, your profession, your intentions with them, so how can you contribute to, to their community. So they're going to be very open to hear uh, what you have to say. So that's why you need to practice a little bit more um, talking about yourself again and uh, your profession and uh, your... Ultimately, you should use this experience to travel. If you are in a foreign country, whether it would be Canada or America, Australia, England, um, there are a lot of places to see, so um, this is a one-of-a-lifetime opportunity to, to experience a country and a culture, and uh, you should not, you know, sit inside of your dorm and, you know, <laughs> um, not see the world around you. I could go on and on about this topic. Maybe in the future videos I will talk about specific um, problems or specific uh, specific situations that you can encounter. Uh, if you have any questions when it comes to this um, topic, you can also email me and I will try to kind of put your question into consideration and make a video about that topic. So studying abroad uh, and um, working abroad is a one of a lifetime opportunity. It will move you out of your comfort zone. Uh, it will teach you a lot of things. Uh, so definitely, if, uh, if you have a chance 
uh, if you have a program that you can apply for, please do, because um, it will serve not only your English, but also your personal life. So that was all for me uh, for this video. It's a little bit long anyway, so uh, bye bye and see you in the next one.